this year in Jesus name in Matthew chapter 13 I'm reading from verse 31 Matthew chapter 13 I'm looking at verses 31 and 32 Matthew 13 verse 31 another parable put he forth unto them see the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is sown, when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Those two verses I've read to you tells us about something. It tells us about taking a seed a small seed planting it on the ground today and then as you plant that seed today and then day after day and week after week and month after month before you know what it says it grows up it becomes a mighty tree that even the birds come to lodge underneath it that's the text we're using today i'm looking at Planting the seeds of a desirable future. Planting the seeds of a desirable future. We'll be talking about the future because this year is going to be a glorious future. And it's going to be a better future. But the Lord is telling us something that if we're going to have that glorious future and brighter future and blessed future in front of us, ahead of us, we need to begin to plant some seeds. If you want a joy, plant some joy. You want some love, plant some love. And you want some progress, plant something. Because it is what you plant today that is going to germinate, that is going to grow. And it's going to grow so big that you will wonder the difference between the great tree that you're going to have and then the small seed that you are planting. The message is planting the seeds of a desirable future. It tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. We're looking at verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. It's telling us that, you know, there are some people, they do not understand that if we say that this year is going to be a bountiful year, a happy year, a prosperous year, a progressive year, a better year than any year of the past, they do not understand we need to sow something. And it is what we sow that we're able to reap. And then the Lord multiplies the seed that we have sown. And then it gives you something greater, something better, something richer, something higher. But it says, if you're so sparingly, if you're stingy in your sowing, if you're limited in your sowing, if you're too much calculating in your sowing, what you reap also be limited. But if you say, I'm just going to sow abundantly every week, you're sowing. Every month, you're sowing. Before you come to the end of the year, God will multiply a hundredfold in your bosom. And you're going to reap mightily and abundantly this year in Jesus' name. It tells us in Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Planting the seeds of a desirable future. Galatians chapter 6. I'm reading there from verse 7, verse 8, and verse 9. It says... Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Uh, when people read that verse of scripture, they only look at the negative side. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. They do not understand. The Lord is talking, He's given us a general principle. 
He said that whatsoever a man soweth, that shall be also reap. It's also positive because if you sow corn, you're going to get corn. If you sow rice, you're going to have rice. You sow whatever you sow, that's what you're going to have. If you sow something bad, of course, you reap something bad. If you sow something good, you're going to sow something good. I said this year you saw something good. And goodness and mercy will never leave your life because of what you're going to sow. It says, if you whatever you sow, that's what you read. Look at verse 8. For he that sows to the flesh shall also shall of the flesh reap corruption. That's the negative sowing. But it doesn't stop there. But he that sows to the spirit. There is a positive side to what you sow. He that sweat to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. You are going to reap something this year that will never end. That as we are sowing and sowing and sowing. And say, I'm going to sow to the Spirit. I'm going to sow in the Spirit. I'm going to sow by the Spirit. I'm going to sow things that are spiritual and things that are uplifting. And things that are profitable and things that are helping all the people that will make them happy and joyful and fulfilled as you sow that it says that's what you are going to reap as well I'm going to divide this message to three parts number one wise sowers seeking a delightful future wise sowers wise sowers that is every day they're sowing something they're sowing some, they're wise, they're wise. They say, I want joy, I want to sow some joy into somebody's life. I want happiness this year. I want to sow some happiness into somebody's life. I want prosperity. I'm going to sow some things into people's lives that will make them prosper. And I want a extension, expansion, enlightenment. I'm going to enlighten the lives of other people this year. It says, what we sow is what we reap. So if we are wise, if I know I want joy, that's what I want to reap. That determines what I sow. I want prosperity, then because that's what I'm looking at, that determines what I sow. And I'm going to, I, I want a good name, I want good reputation. I want people to speak well of me. If that is what I want, I'm going to sow. That same thing. I'm going to speak well of other people. I'm going to help other people to be where they ought to be. Wise, sowers, seeking a delightful future. But... There's some sowers who are not wise, and I need to tell you about them, so we can prevent that. This year, you'll be wise. I said you'll be wise. You will, ne you will not sow anything you want, you don't want to reap. Anytime you are sowing, be asking yourself, if this thing will be multiplied a hundredfold, and giving back to me, is this the kind of thing I want? I say, no, if I don't want this to be harvested and brought into my life and brought into my family i'm not going to sow that thing that's what i'm going to show you number two on wise sowers sowing for a doomed future on wise sowers they're not wise if they were wise every time they're sowing they should be asking themselves do I want this to become the harvest I reap in this year? Do I want this to be multiplied into my life this year? If that is not what I want, then I will not sow it on wise sowers, sowing for a doomed future. Number three, watchful sowers. When you sow it, you watch over it. Because what you sow during the day, you're not going to allow the devil to go and uproot in the night. Nobody will uproot your plant in Jesus' name. But, but every plant the Heavenly Father has not planted in your life, what have we done? We rooted out. And this day, we're going to root out every negative thing in your life in Jesus' name. But you are watchful, you are watchful. Whatever you sow, whatever you plant, you are watching over them so you can secure a desirable future. Point number three, watchful sowers securing a desirable future. I, go, I come to number one. Number one is wise sowers seeking a delightful future. We're looking at Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26 and we're reading there from verse 12 Genesis chapter 26 I'm reading from verse 12 it tells us about a wise sower you'll be a wise sower 
It tells us Genesis chapter 26, and we're looking at verse 12. In verse 12, here is what it says. It talks about Isaac. It says, Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Isaac is gone. You are the one there. And this year, a hundredfold. I said this year, a hundredfold. And it says, Isaac is sowed. And when he sowed, they were told that the Lord blessed him and gave him a hundredfold. Look at verse 13. And the man waxed great and went forward and he grew until he became very great. Can you see three things that it is for you? Number one, you'll be great. Number two, you'll march forward. Number three, you'll become very great in Jesus' name. Just because he sold. He sold. And what he sold, the Lord multiplied a hundredfold. And this year, you're looking every day, you're looking for something to sow. Something to sow. Something to sow. You want to sow something and then a hundredfold coming back to you. If you need money, the little money you have, so part of it and let a hundredfold come. If you want whatever you want, sow a little part of that and let a hundredfold come in your life. And then you must put him and you add possession. Possession of flocks. And then in verse 13, it's in verse 14, it says, and possession of hers and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. You become enviable. You see, that, that's what the Lord did for Isaac because he sold something. And the Lord said, Isaac, because of Abraham, I'm going to so bless you that a hundredfold I'm going to give unto you. And the Lord is saying that because you belong to Christ, because you belong to Christ, you are believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is your Savior, He is your Lord, He is your Redeemer. He took your sins away, no condemnation, no guilt, and then He gave you eternal life. I say, I belong to Christ, I belong to Christ. And all those who belong to Christ is going to take whatever you sow and multiply a hundredfold. Look at verse 24. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and I will bless thee. And I will multiply thy seed for thy for my servant Abraham's sake. The Lord is saying, is going to multiply you. If you were barren in the previous years, this year your baby is coming in Jesus' name. You were jobless in the previous year, this year your job is coming in Jesus' name. And if you spent a lot of money, a lot of money in the hospitals last year, this year hospital will close that door. And you're going to be healthy in Jesus' name. Because the Lord is saying that this year is going to answer your prayer. And this year is going to multiply all the seed you sow in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. You see what the Lord did for Isaac. He gave him, he gave him a hundredfold. And here is what the Lord is saying in Matthew chapter 19. Reading there from verse 29. Matthew chapter 19. And we're reading from verse 29. And everyone that has forsaken houses, everyone, everyone, I am included. I said I am included. This is the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, you, if you think, you, you know, you've consecrated that, you've given, you've given your time, you've given your talent, you've given whatever it is you have for the progress of the kingdom of God. Everyone that has forsaken houses or brethren or, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive, tell me, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. He said, I seek is not peculiar. I seek is not unique. I seek is not special. What the Lord has done for I seek is going to do for you. Because he said, everyone that has forsaken this and forsaken this and forsaken that. that when he says forsaken, it doesn't mean that we hate them. He just says that the time I should give to my father, I'm giving it to the Lord. The time I should give to my mother, I'm giving it to the Lord. The time I should give to my wife, I'm giving that to the Lord. The time I should have given to my husband, 
I'm sowing something. I'm doing evangelism. I'm planting here, planting here, planting here. And when he sows there, and my friends are saying, hey, you, we are no more with us again. And the time I should give to my friends, I'm giving that to the Lord. And says, those who are forsaking their, their husbands, their wives, their children, their mothers, not that they abandoned them. No. That is, you have taken some time away from them. You should give to them. You are giving that to the gospel. You are sowing this seed. And that thing you sow, the Lord is going to repay you a hundredfold in Jesus' name. We're looking at Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Luke chapter 6. And we're reading there from verse 38. This is what the Lord is telling you that this year is going to be a year of prosperity. Is it going to be a year of expansion, a year of extension and enlargement in our lives in Jesus' name? Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give and shall be given unto you. When it says give and shall be given unto you, what does that mean? There's some people, they think about money. Well, of course, money is included there. If you give money to the needy, you give money to the poor, you give money to the people who are they need in their lives. The Lord is saying that every amount of money you give to other people to help them, to help their families, the Lord will multiply and give it back to you in Jesus' name. Not only you give it to the church of the living God. We're planting churches there, there and there. And it says give. When you give like that, don't think you've lost anything that you give. You're sowing. It's like when a farmer plants the seed in the ground. He has not lost the seed. That seed is going to grow up. And that seed is going to be multiplied and brought back to him during the harvest time. Your harvest time is coming in Jesus' name. So, as we get involved in that district and that district and that location, that locality, and we're giving our time, we're giving our resources, we're giving our talents. If you know how to preach, give your voice and preach. You know how to sing, give your voice and sing. And you know how to evangelize, give your voice and evangelize. And it says, give and it shall be given unto you. We're giving to the Lord, we're giving to the church, and we're giving to those who I need. Then it says, good measure. You'll have a good measure. Press down. You have a press down measure. And shaking together and running over. This is the year of running over. I said, this is the year of running over. And the running over will come in your life in Jesus' name. Shall men give into your bosom. Whose bosom? I said, whose bosom? It is coming to you. You know, if we follow this this year, this year can be the best year you ever live in your life. A year of joy, a year of happiness. Because what you want happiness, so it in the lives of other people. You want joy, so that in the lives of other people. You want help, help other people to be healthy. Because what you give, the Lord is going to give by them. It says for the same measure that she meets with her, it shall be measured unto you again. Praise the Lord. Uh, but you know sometimes, as we talk about sowing, sometimes you don't feel like sowing. Sometimes it's like, I don't feel like sowing anything. I'm unhappy. I'm sorrowful. This happened to me. That happened to me. And nobody feels happy 100% of the time. There are times it just feel I don't want to sow anything. That's the best time to sow. You know what I want.